The term humble manipulator came to me. <laughs> you know what? I won't say the situation, but it came to me where I was just like, wow. A lot of people hide behind the guise of humility to manipulate you for their ulterior motives. And you're not even aware. You just out here get manipulated. You're not even aware that they have ulterior motives and they're being manipulative. In today's video, we're going to talk about the humble manipulator. Those humble people that manipulates and use their humility to manipulate. We're going to get into all of that, the signs, how to spot them, how to deal with them and all that. But before we do, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Korean Elemental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. So the term humble manipulator just came to me as like, People use humility to manipulate you. And then I went to do research for this video and I found a great article that sums it up, which I'll put in the description for you guys by Global English Editing. Okay. And it was written by Mia Zhang. It's people who appear humble on the surface, but are actually highly manipulative. You usually display these seven behaviors. That's the title of it. What? I, my mind was blown because I always wanted a term to describe some of the stuff that I was witnessing, you know, whether it was from stories other people was telling me me dealing with stuff on my own I just knew that it just had to be like you're not delusional you're not crazy out here not losing your mind so number one of a humble manipulator the first sign is that they're masters at playing the victim they present themselves as the underdog always at the receiving end of life's injustices their stories are filled with tales of being wronged or misunderstood if you're going to navigate these relationships effectively it's crucial to understand that you're not dealing with a victim you're dealing with a master manipulator okay so these are the people that everything has happened to me like i am such a dove i do no wrong i'm good to people i don't you know blah blah, blah. i just don't understand why bad things are just always happening to me and in some cases there are genuinely people in the bible like if you even look at the story of moses he was called the most humble man you know to walk the earth and the lord loved moses so much because he was so meek and humble and yet people are always plotting against moses his own sister miriam <laughs> aaron <laughs> There are humble people that people do come after and bad things just happen to good people all the time. That saying can be true. So I'm not saying if that is the case for someone that automatically, oh my goodness, they're a humble manipulator. No, that's just a sign. You can kind of tell when it seems like, huh? Like if every relationship you've ever been in there, you cannot recall not one bad thing you do because usually humble people, real humble people tend to spot where they were wrong or give themselves even if they were not wrong there there's no blame to give them and how things ended or how things went whether with family friends or a job they still try to assign some wrong to them i like to say that i even think david was really humble in the bible because he was always calling himself out and that's a sign of the type of people that god works with also it's people that are able to call themselves out that are able to know where they're wrong and nowhere to assign blame for themselves. But the humble manipulator does not ever assign any blame to themselves. They're never wrong. They're really quite literally never wrong. Everything happens to them and not for them. It happens against them. And everyone's a plotter. No one likes me. I'm always right. And I just don't know what I do to deserve this. I'm such a great person. That's the humble manipulator. Now, second is their humility is overly consistent. Most of us appreciate consistency as it's often an indicator of reliability and trustworthiness. However, in the case of manipulators, disguised as humble souls and unbroken consistency in their humility can be a red flag. Instead of seeing this consistency as a sign of genuine humility, it's worth considering it as a potential manipulation tactic. When you try to believe in their humility all the time, you give too much power to their facade. You give up your instinct instinctive skepticism. You have the third, which they are always the listener. Mm -hmm. You may initially view this as a positive trait, but soon enough, you might find yourself questioning why they rarely share their own experiences. You might even find yourself feeling emotionally exhausted, being the one always sharing and opening up. Few relationships can thrive in such imbalance. Emotional exhaustion creeps into relationships subtly, but if you willingly accept the role of the sole sharer, you're setting yourself up for manipulation. 
Also, it's important to question why they persistently play the listener. Perhaps they're exploiting your openness to gather information for their own advantage. You find that the humble manipulator, whenever they're in a group, they're always the one listening, right? Or when it's with you, you seem to never know anything about them, but somehow they get you to ease up and share everything about you yourself. It's it's not a mutual under getting to know of each other it's like the humble manipulator is such a great listener and they're usually a great listener because there's a reason there's a manipulation that's going to come from it with the exploitation and you have to pay attention to those signs i'm going to tell you guys why it's dangerous why these people are dangerous and how to use their humble manipulation later but i just need you guys to pay attention to the signs next is their humbleness never leads to vulnerability in my experience, I've noticed that the manipulators, despite their humility, rarely show any form of vulnerability. They maintain a consistent image of being the humble person who needs others, yet never the one who makes mistakes or have weaknesses. Their intentions may seem good. This humility could appear as a sign of respect for others and selflessness. But when they persistently avoid vulnerability, it becomes clear that their humility is more a shield than an authentic part of their character. They become distant and unrelatable, and their humility likely to means to an end. If I judge them merely on their humble presentation, I would question their motives. How they relate with people is what matters, not the humility they outwardly exhibit. If it just seems like these people cannot relate to people because they're never vulnerable, like you realize, dang, this person never had a vulnerable moment around us. Like we really don't know them on that vulnerable, and vulnerable aspect or tip. They're really, hmm. What do I know about this person, right? You got to ask yourself, why is that? Because a person who's sincere, a person who actually is not aiming to manipulate you, they're going to have vulnerable moments. Say, if a humble manipulator is someone that you could be friends with for months and years even and never really can recall ever seeing them have a vulnerable moment with you where they either made a mistake and admitted it, say, sorry, ah, oh, Dane, I know I'm like this, my bad, whatever, or just share a part of them with you. They just always so guarded and very calculated about everything that you start to question, hmm, how much do I know about this person? It starts to come off a little questionable to you now, right? So next is they subtly steer the conversation. This one's important. The reason why they're rarely ever vulnerable is because they don't, they like to gather information from others to use it against others, but they know if they're vulnerable because they like to spot out vulnerability in others as a form of weakness to know where to attack or be manipulated. They guard their vulnerability so that they don't get played the same way. <laughs> It's crazy, but it's true. People that are that guarded usually just don't want to get played. And usually when you're so focused on that, like there's no one you just can let your guard down for. No one at all. Like no one at all. Then you're always on edge and you're the one trying to always be ahead or have control or be the one to steer every situation. The writer gives an example and says, I remember a colleague who was admired for his humility and listening skills. He rarely took center stage during discussions, but was always present, nodding along and offering words of understanding. However, I started noticing a pattern. Conversations with him somehow always ended up where he wanted them to go. He'd ask seemingly innocent questions, but these questions would subtly steer the conversation towards his desired direction. The more I observed, the clearer it became. His humility was a genuine it was a tool used to control discussions and outcomes subtly. I wasn't engaging in a two-way conversation. I was being led down a path of his design. This revelation taught me an important lesson in discernment. A manipulator doesn't always look like one. Sometimes they wear the mask of a humble listener. This goes with the listening and... I'll say this, when I worked in corporate and in school, part of it, like you deal with a lot of sales because dealing with clients and customers, it's, a, it's sales, it's sales tactics. And one of them is knowing how to steer the conversation your way. Like that is a manipulation tactic. So the best way to do that is to show that you're a good listener. You repeat back what the person is saying, but you're always guiding and controlling the path. You can get someone to say yes without them even realizing they're saying yes by shaking and nodding of your head as you're asking them a question the way you pose it and then you're steering them in a way 
And you can tell a master interviewer, skillful person like Oprah is phenomenal at this, right? That's why she was so popular and she would have people interview. She would interview people. She'd know how to get people to cry or be emotional on her show and be transparent. And she skillfully would steer the conversation to ask those tough questions that other interviewers just didn't have the same tact to ask. And that's why her interviews would be so gold because there'd be so much the the whatever celebrity or fi um, powerful figure that would come on her show would be so open. There's a way she just steers and knows how to ask and be a good listener with it. Is she manipulative? Is Oprah just that great of a listener? Or is she just, hey, this is going to get me ratings. I'm a good interviewer. Da, da, da. Could it be that? Or could she just be a really great listener? Or is it there's a manipulation in there to get her coin somehow? I ain't mad at it, sis. But we learned that in corporate too. It's a whole manipulation game. Even in dating, men know how to do this. They know how to steer the conversation into a sexual path or into a path that's going to benefit them or get it there. And you think you're in control, but you're not. They're leading you with every joke, every way, but they're trying to appear humble. That's not really what I want. They did to show you their hand that all I want is to, you know, pump and dump. They're not going to show their hand. So they're manipulating in a way to, you know, steer and control the conversation. So the humble manipulator knows how to do that. They're not outwardly just going to show you their hand and show you this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to take the conversation. They're very strategic with it and they use your own words against you, which is why they're great listeners, because they're using your own what you're sharing with them. And um, manipulators don't like even Robert Greene and the artist seduction, which I'll do a book club for you guys. Comment below if you want. I will do a thorough one because that would teach you a lot of lessons. Uh, a lot of Christians don't like to learn these things, but if y'all seen in my previous videos that I've done lately, I'm telling you why it's important as Christians, even biblical like examples with like, you know, Cain and Abel, Joseph, all of that. Like it's important to know these things. Okay. But in the art of seduction, Robert Greene says that, hey, don't try to seduce someone who's so resistant to seduction. And the resistant person to seduction is a person that's so aware that they're being seduced. They give you nothing. So even a master seducer knows I can only go after someone who's willing to be seduced, who's an easy target. When you become a difficult target, for instance, you're talking to a humble manipulator and they're constantly trying to get you to talk, but you're steering the conversation back to get them to be vulnerable. You're like, let me not overshare. When I tell you guys not to overshare, to move in silence, to have the art of discernment to keep yourself to yourself. This is what I'm talking about to protect you from these type of things, right? not oversharing they're asking personal questions and you're just like hey so what about you though what you know and then if they give you a dry well I was like, well that wasn't really an answer come on what's the real answer whatever like for instance you ask they ask you something crazy i don't know like <laughs> say you're on a date and the guy's like what well, so why aren't you dating anyone right now what what happened in between you and your ex or whatever and then you don't want to overshare just yet because you're like hey like in my videos, pickup artists, I'll, I'll actually I'll pin that one. <laughs> the comments hilarious. But the subtle tactics that they use, the manipulation that they use, asking you why. So he could use whatever you're saying against you later. Then you give a generic answer. You're like, you know, well, I just, there's a lot for me to learn with myself right now. I'm growing, I'm focusing on this. And I just know relationships require a lot of time. And I just don't have that kind of time to invest into a relationship right now. So my last relationship, that's why it didn't work. Even if it was for something else, that's the generic answer that you give, right? And then you say, what about you? Why are you single? I mean, you seem like a catch, da, 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 right? You throw it back at them. Oh, yeah, same as you. I'm just it's like, oh, come on, please, come on. Don't tell me that. There's no way. You have time right now to talk to me. We're on a date. We're talking. So what's, you know, what's, what's tea? And then he could flip it back on you if he's good, but always keep flipping it back, flipping it back and call out their lack of vulnerability. I find that when you call out a humble manipulator to their face, their lack of vulnerability, or how you're always the listener. I'm curious to know about you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I feel like I've over-talked. Like those best people are like, oh man, I'm just rambling on. I over-talked. Let me get to know you a little bit. Tell me something about yourself. Well, I don't know what to say. What well, I have questions, for instance. Let me know. What's, what's, what's your favorite food? Like, what do you like to eat? And then start to ask those questions, call it out. Like you don't share much, do you? You're always listening. I'm curious to know. You're a little too quiet, you know? Come on, give me something. You're giving me nothing. Call them out and force them to be vulnerable. 
if a master manipulator, uh, a humble manipulator's main goal was to manipulate you, as you're doing that, you're no longer a fun target. And they're going to leave you alone. They're either going to move on to the next target, or you might just get to crack the code of that humble manipulator and get them to be vulnerable. And y'all all are y'all both are on equal plane now, right? But never just continue to share, 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 share and have them be the listener, have them be the listener and you never get anything in return. No, always let it be reciprocal. Let's talk. I'm getting to know you. You're getting to know me. I'm sharing, you're sharing. And if it's not being reciprocated, then I cut it off. Six is their expert in body language, which manipulators who appear humble are often well-versed in the subtle language of the body. They understand that their nonverbal cues can reinforce their image as humble individuals, disarming any potential suspicions. These individuals are adept at mirroring their body language, making you feel understood and comfortable. They make use of non-threatening gestures, maintain steady eye contact, and often position themselves in a way that seems submissive or non-confrontational. For those not aware of these tactics, interacting with such individuals can instill a sense of trust and ease. It's a reminder that manipulation isn't always overt. Sometimes it's wrapped in the guise of understanding and humility. Being aware of these physical cues is crucial. It allows us to see beyond the humble facade and recognize the calculated actions of a manipulator. And again, in the corporate world and business school, they teach you these things. Like, you know, there's a level of professionalism. You're not supposed to be, you know, touching on the person, but the, there's a power of handshakes, even knowing how to handshake and keep subtle touch to um, bring that trust, making eye contact, body language should not seem too aggressive like you're selling something, to be a little bit more relaxed, shoulders down. Like we have to learn these things, right? And the sales pitch. So take it the professionalism away, it's a little easier for me to spot with people in the real world <laughs> because it's like, oh, okay, I had to learn this for work and I see you're doing it in the real world with people and you're not at work. What's your motive for utilizing these body languages? But I'm not going to be too hard because a lot of people use body language tactics when they're insecure, nervous, or socially awkward. Like I have a lot of friends that are socially awkward and I was someone, like I still struggle with shyness and being socially awkward a lot. So in an environment, we'll exude confidence when we walk in, we'll exude certain body languages to bring out a facade of us to help us to get through the day of being around a lot of people. <laughs> but it becomes a problem when you're using somebody's body language against them and you're manipulating your body language to get them to bend into your will. You know, that's when it becomes a problem and you can kind of see that. Um, for instance, if you're on a date and you see the guy starts to, you know, be a little touchy prematurely and stuff like that and using body language, a deep gaze. Again, in the video below, we talk about all of that in the comment sections that's pinned go check it out check it out i'll put it in the end cards also if they're using those tactics and there's a manipulation that's there that's coming from it and you have to be aware like hmm all right what's up here let's 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 pump the brakes okay number seven and last is they rarely ask for help it may seem odd that those who project humility seldom ask for assistance after all seeking help is often seen as an act of humility an acknowledgement of our limitations and needs for others however these manipulators take a different approach they rarely position themselves in, pl in a place of needing help maintaining an image of quiet self-sufficiency this tactic serves two purposes firstly it reinforces the perception of them being low maintenance and unassuming. Secondly, it subtly conveys a sense of superiority as they appear to navigate life's challenges independently. The paradox here is that their refusal to seek help is not a sign of strength or independence, but a manipulation tactic. It's a careful balance of appearing humble while subtly asserting dominance. <laughs> That one is insane because, you know, I must say, I must say, I don't like to need help, so I don't put myself in a position to need help often. But, but, there's so many times I need help and then I do just get it. Do I like it? No, nobody likes to always be the one to ask for help, right? That's normal. Does that make you a manipulator? No, but there are times you're going to need it. Like you're going to need it. And I have people around me that know I'm not shy to ask for help if that's your area of expertise, that's what you're good with. And that's the kind of friendships I foster where I help my friends, my friends help me in the way that they can. They all have their purposes in my life with helping me and I have my purpose in their life when it comes to me helping them. But a person that just seems to, even if you're offering to make their life easy, they never need help, but they're always the, the one giving help, but never requiring it. Even the most, like the real humble 
person needs help. I like this with Moses because even in the story where his father-in-law, Jethro, was telling him, hey, you're burning yourself out. You need help to deal with all these Israelites. I did a video on burnout on that too, where we use that example. Moses even needed help. And he listened to his father-in-law and got help and divided the Israelites into different subgroups with leaders over them. And then a second time that happened also where the Lord himself was telling Moses, hey, you know, Moses went to the Lord and told the Lord, hey, I can't. This is too much. I can't. I cannot. And the Lord was like, all right, gather people you trust that are men of God, and I will give them a portion of the spirit that I put on you. I will put on them, you know? So Moses several times called help. David wrote how many songs in the Bible crying out for help me, oh Lord, I am weak. I am a worm. I am wretched. <laughs> yes, he needs help. The true act of uh, humility is needing help sometimes. The same people that are like, you will be the lender and not the borrower, the head and not the tail, but you still need help. That's humility. And humility is being able to take the help, receive the help when it comes and not being arrogant and not feeling superior. I don't want to need nothing from no one. Even if people throw it in your face or they go talk about it, because a lot of us don't want help from others because we don't want people to use it against us, to go talk about us. Oh, I helped her win this and that. Use it. You know, we're vulnerable with that. But even then, listen, listen, let that be. You know, that's a true sign of your character is that you're not ashamed that when you need help, you know where to get it. You go and get it and you're humble about it and you get it. But why these people are so dangerous is because those people in your life that stick around like the humble manipulator, they always have motives. They always have motives and reasons. And you may not be their target in the moment because they keep people around like chess checkers and pawns. And I'm speaking from experience of having dealt with humble manipulators. They have their motives. And if you're not aware of them, you will fall into the trap of falsely believing this is such a good humble person and you'll take on the victim role in their story. You'll be a victim of them and then guess what? They're going to turn around and make you the villain. They're still always end up the victim, but you're going to be the villain even though you are the victim. I've dealt with situations like that where it was a humble manipulator and I'm helping out like, oh my goodness, oh, hearing the sob story and all of that, blah, 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 blah. Oh, people do this. Let me rescue you. Let me set you up good and you know dude no 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 and it turns out that oh okay i see and i asked the lord how come i didn't see this before well you're neglecting to learn that aspect about others you know the knowledge is there like the bible says my people perish for they lack knowledge you know get that knowledge and understand <laughs> get that knowledge and understanding but i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in this is as always coming from a place of love and i'm always speaking to myself first i'll see you guys in the next one Mm-hmm.